Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be pulling some plants from my garden. Now usually this is hard for me but a lot of these plants are either almost completely dead or broken and then others I'm just kind of over and want them out of my garden. It's also cooled down quite a bit here in Chicago. I think we're so we're into fall officially and I think we're definitely kind of on the trajectory of 60 to 50 degree weather instead of 80s and 70s. You can see the wind right now which has been part of the problem why some of my plants are broken but let me take you around and show you what I'm going to pull. First is the morning glory. Now from back here still looks relatively okay. Also I think the plant knows I'm planning to pull it because yesterday and today it has been blooming the most it has ever bloomed before. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a few there to open but you know what? Even though they're pretty it's time to go for a few reasons. One like I said I mean it's a lot of it is dead. The back half is already kind of completely browned and fallen off. Um, so I want to just get this pulled for one, aesthetic reasons, and two, I want to make sure the plants in here are getting enough sunlight. As the days are getting shorter, there's not as much opportunity for these to get sun, and obviously this cast shadow throughout a lot of the day. So the sun's starting behind, um, over on that side of our home, and then coming over the top, and then shining this way in the afternoon. So it really only gets a few hours right now that are directly hitting these plants. So that I'm going to pull. Then I had this elephant ear, which I think I've mentioned before, I just haven't loved in the garden. Um, but what I'm going to do instead of leaving it out here where I've just been moving it around, not really knowing where to put it, I'm going to take it inside and treat it as a house plant. I've never done that before. And what I've read is that it will still go dormant at some point, but I'd rather have it go dormant inside where I think I'll enjoy it more than outside where I'm not really enjoying it. Once it goes dormant, I will chop off the leaves and then give the actual elephant ear bulb to somebody that wants it in their garden next year. So that's the plan with that. That also might be the plan with this fern that's just sitting in the chair. I think that might be time for it to go inside as well. Um, other things I am going to pull. Let me see if you can guess. And there's a dahlia. So the wind initially broke it off and then I tried to tie it back up and then we got even more wind and now this whole plant, which was the Thomas A. Edison, is just over and bent. So I definitely have to cut that one. I'm also going to cut these two. I mean, Otto's throw looks pretty sad. We'll see if I leave it or not. And then <laughs> there's also two over there that are looking pretty sad. So we'll see kind of as I go through what I decide to do. Now, one question I had was, is it okay to go ahead and cut down the dahlias now if they are tattered and I'm tired of looking at them? Because I knew last year, which was my first year trying to overwinter the tubers, I read that you want to wait for the stems to go black before you cut them down and then dig up the tuber. But everyone I asked online said you can go ahead and cut them now. Just leave the tuber in the bag and a little bit of stem um, until like mid to late October. So that's gonna be my plan. And it was also Mother Nature helped me decide that my plan is that by breaking the dahlia. So we'll go ahead and remove those, but I'll leave the bags there. I might move them somewhere else on the deck, but we'll leave the tubers in the bags for now. And then I'll show you later how I'm planning to overwinter them, which does not involve digging them up. I'm also going to pull some of these herbs. So definitely the two basil here. I'm going to pull them, harvest all the leaves, which leaves still look pretty good overall. I have not been as on top of harvesting the herbs as I should have been, which is why they're flowering. So I know that can make the taste a little bit more mild or impacted, but either way, that's what I'm left with now. So I'm gonna harvest all the leaves and make some pesto tonight. It always seems like you have so many basil leaves, so you're gonna get so much pesto and then you make the pesto and it's like a little jar full, um, but I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna use both of these for the pesto. I'm also going to pull for sure the lemon balm, which this one, was one of them that got impacted when we were gone where the drip fell out. I have given it some fertilizer to try to green up the leaves. It sort of worked but not really so I'm going to harvest all of the nice looking leaves off of this and save those. And then I just noticed yesterday my parsley is starting to yellow so I'm going to pull that as well. Everything else though, the oregano, rosemary, 
lemon thyme, sage, and lavender. Oh, and chocolate mint. I think I'm gonna leave those out here for now. Now I kind of want to start with the morning glory behind me, just because I think that might take the longest, but I should also probably remove the dahlia, at least the one that is laying on top of my other plant. So my plan is to cut the bottom first where it's growing in the pot and then from my experience moving a morning glory or pulling a morning glory off of a much smaller trellis i'm basically gonna have to cut everything it's not like i can just pull it through didn't seem to work that well so i think i'm just gonna cut 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 and then remove it hopefully fairly easily So that honestly wasn't as bad as I thought. We still have random leaf here, but look, you can actually see the spider plant again and all of the runners it's put off. So that hasn't felt sun in a while. And down here is the mess I made with the morning glory. So I'll go ahead and clean that up. Also wanted to show the root ball. So I definitely need to either put just one morning glory in there or get a larger pot. This is also probably why I had to water it twice a day. I definitely, like I said, couldn't cut and then just pull the vine, um, but just cutting piece by piece and then kind of removing it in smaller pieces worked really well. It's definitely the toughest vine that I have ever had in my garden, but I'm excited to grow it again, even though this really didn't start flowering until a little bit later than I was expecting. Um, the look of the leaves just themselves on top of the flower cart was just absolute perfection. So I'm definitely growing those next year in a larger pot next to the flower stand. So now what I'm gonna do is clean up the mess and then I think reposition everything back on the cart. She is cleaned up and I put the plants back on. I know I already did a video on this, so I didn't want to bore you too much by doing it again, but the only differences I think are that I moved one of the mums up there. Now that you can actually see the spider plant again, I put some pumpkins into the chandelier. And then I moved up this grass that I had by the front door. And I think I really like it. So now I need to figure out what I'm going to do with the dahlias. I think most of them are going to get cut down, but we'll see. So this is what this side looks like. I basically pulled all of them except for what's left of Otto's Thrill here. So this is all of the dolly waste that I'm going to worry about another day. And then I was about to move the bags and I realized if I move them, I won't remember what they are. So this was Cafe LA, Michaela Miranda, what is left but still blooming and has buds of Otto's Thrill. We'll see if the wind takes that or not. And then Thomas A. Edison was the one that broke back here. Now coming over on the other side, I actually left 
the Thomas A. Edison because that still has a lot of buds and a lot of branches and I pulled the Otto's Thrill because one was already bent and the other one wasn't really putting out much. So I basically have part of two. Is the wind gonna take it right now? Nope, we're still upright so far, um, but we basically have two left in the garden with some buds on them. And this is a bud vase of the ones that I pulled. And then that one right there is the fire pot decorative dahlia. So that's in the raised bed. Those don't get very tall, so those have been fine. So the last thing on my list now is to pull the herbs, but I think I'm gonna wait because it seems to be pollinator o'clock right now. The flowers on the herbs are in use, so I'm gonna wait a little bit and then I will come out and pull them maybe in a couple hours. So it's a little bit later and I am inside now because my plan is to harvest my basil, pull off the leaves, and gather them all up. And I think it is a little bit too windy outside to make that possible out there. So I'm just right outside the garden doors, but I'll show you the two basil plants that I have and then we will get to harvesting. I will mention that I've already blasted them a little bit with water just to knock off any bugs that might be on there, although very likely there could still be some hiding in here. All the bees did seem to go. So I have two basil plants. I have one that's just the regular like sweet basil and there are a few flowers on that one. And then I have, and this is my first time growing this variety, the pesto basil. So I assume that means it's specifically for pesto. Um, this one I did not harvest as much as I should have. So not only is it flowering, but it's also much more vertical and less kind of bushy than I think it would be. But I do love the purple blooms. Also, it smells amazing right now in here, um, but the blooms are just really beautiful. I'm actually wondering, it probably won't work, but I'm wondering if when I harvest, is there any way to keep the purplish parts, dry them, and see if they look pretty for arrangements or decorations. So I'll probably dry them anyway, because I'm not gonna do anything else with the flowers, so might as well try it out and see how it goes. Um, but I think my plan is just to snip them off at the base and then pull all of the good looking leaves off. I have this little bowl here because I have three harvest baskets and all of them are in the kitchen. And I think there's like a few things in each. So instead of me consolidating and remembering to bring one back up, I'm now using this bowl and then I also have these random baskets if this bowl isn't enough. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to mention about these plants. I guess one thing too is the reason I'm not drying these, which I have dried basil in the past, but one, I don't use a ton of dried basil and also for me it doesn't really taste as good. Like I would rather use this and make some pesto that will either eat in the next few days or I can freeze versus drying it, because I think I would enjoy the pesto a lot more. So let's go ahead and start harvesting. I put down this potting mat that I got from Amazon just to be a bit more responsible and try to keep things clean. But my plan is just go in here, snip off each of these, scream if any bugs pop out at me. One more. And there we go. So now I'll go ahead and just get these leaves removed. So I very quickly realized that the bowls I had were not gonna be enough. So I ran down and grabbed one of my harvest baskets. Now, this is all of the leaves on the pesto basil that I've harvested. Most of the leaves are in pretty good condition. I'll remove anything that has like holes or that's turning brown, but overall the plant was really healthy despite my neglect or maybe because of my neglect. Um, also, even though I love the smell of basil, it is a little bit overwhelming right now. Um, but next I'm gonna do the sweet basil plant, add that to my basket, and then I think that'll be everything for the day. So I'll harvest that one and I'll show you what my total looks like. And we are officially done. So all of the basil is now in here. There is 
No more basil left in my garden for 2022. I didn't get as many leaves off of the sweet basil. Well, one, it wasn't as large, um, but two, there were a lot more leaves that had browning on them or holes. And I knew that when I was looking at the plants. So this though, is still a really good harvest. But again, I feel like it's gonna make like a quarter cup of basil or of pesto once I'm done. So, oh, and I also, before I forget, so these are all of the flowers that I cut off. I'm just gonna hang these to dry and see what happens. And then one last thing, I think my cat is trying to get out of the screen door, Jack. One last thing is if you can see right there behind me, uh, that is where the elephant ear is going to stay until it dies, or not dies, but until it kind of retires for the season. And then like I said, I'm gonna cut it down and then give the bulb away to somebody who wants it in their garden. But that is everything for today. I really, even though I'm sad that the garden is winding down, I really do like kind of getting things in order and just like spending a day tending to the garden because I know there's not that many days of it left. A lot is going to change over the next month. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.